Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. It's been a week of big announcements in the South African mining industry with the news of the Amplat Northern deal, Marafe's rising ferrochrome output and Exoro's independent coal power selection. Martin Kremer joins me in studio to discuss his developments. Hi Martin. Hi Tracy. So Northern and Anglo-American Platinum have announced this mixed mix and match deal. How is this going to or expected to improve the economic life of Northern Zonderende mine? You know, there's fantastic collaboration between the mining companies. You know, the platinum companies in the past particularly were hostile, they were adversarial. And it's wonderful to see that for the sake of South Africa, putting South Africa first, these companies make use of these resources in the best way. And now Northam is particularly strident in wanting to grow at the moment. It has some new mines on the eastern limb of the Bushveld complex at Boysendal. And it also has the long-standing Zonderende mine on the western limb, which adjoins Anglo-American Platinum's Amundel built. And it is in this area now where there's been this mixing and this matching. Of course, Anglo-American Platinum, we call it Amplats, has been the beneficiary of, or will be the beneficiary of a billion rand in the whole thing. But the life that it will give to Zonderende is very important to South Africa. And little surface assets have also been exchanged to, to actually increase flexibility. Now, I can remember speaking to Barry Davison of Anglo-American Platinum decades ago, and you know the biggest thing for him was flexibility <laughs> in order to make sure that you know when you need to slow down, you can. When you need to speed up, you can. And I was also at the opening of you know Northern Zonderende those decades ago, and it was interesting because that mine was in the hands of goldfields. And at that stage, there was still an adversarial relationship <laughs> between Goldfields and Anglo-American because at one stage, Anglo-American tried to take it over. And, if, and I can still remember the Goldfields um, MD, Robin Plumbridge, uh, saying to the minister, the then minister of um, industry, Derek Keyes, you know, you were in my class at WITS and I always regarded you as the bright spark but I've changed my mind. You must be a dumb fella, because who, who's bright would go into politics? <laughs> so that was the joke of the day. But there have always been constraints for Zunderain that's got quite a difficult ore body. But technology has overcome this, and <clears throat> you find that they're using the hydropower technology in that mine, and they need it to extend its life because you get the new life on the, on the eastern limb with Boysendal, they needed to match it on the western limb, which they do with this deal. Obviously, it's still got to go through the regulatory process, but it seems as though it should be a done deal, and both parties are benefiting from this. How does this support Northam's growth projects? You know, uh, Northam needed a growth extension at Zonderende. It was starting to be growth constrained. and by being able to go down dip here, it adds decades, three decades to its uh, potential life, probably more, you know, they always extend these even further. And it fulfills the ambition of Northam, you know, to get to that million ounce target that it's got. It's in a growth phase, Northam sees uh, platinum in serious deficit, you know, the, the mining uh, industry is not producing at a rate that the world looks like it'll need. Uh, 2025, 9 million ounces collectively of uh, platinum. I think South Africa will only produce over 4 million uh, ounces this year, and next year they probably won't even hit the 4 million ounce because of all the problems they've had in the platinum industry. Northern wants to put its foot on the accelerator so that it will, in time, be uh, producing more ounces into a rising price market. And how does the deal benefit Amplats? Well, Amplats, you know, there was, uh, if you looked at what they got besides the billion rand, there was a small little piece <laughs> that, that goes their way, which, will, it, you know, it looked insignificant on the map. But obviously there is significance there. And, and you wonder whether this doesn't go back to the adversarial relationship of the past where 
the northern company had a little piece that probably gave it a strategic position. Amplates is saying, you know, we now are going to regain that strategic piece. And on the map that they showed, it was shown in yellow, and it was really small compared to all the other uh, uh, property exchanges. And meanwhile, Exaro's um, open cost submetsi mine has been announced or chosen as a preferred independent coal-fired um, project. We what does this mean for Exaro? Yeah, we've been waiting for coal-fired baseload for a long time. They seem to, the Department of Energy took a long time to decide on this. And it's, you know, 2,500 megawatts that they're offering to the private sector. The private sector can come forward and produce electricity like Eskim does as, as the dominant feature in the state sector. As was pointed out by um, Exora, you know, they were delighted with this award. They have teamed up with professional power station developers and managers so that they won't actually generate the power. They go into partnership with these people and supply the coal at Tabametsi, which translated means Waterberg. And, you know, the Waterberg is where they operate. One of the few big operators on that side, uh, Exoro, Exoro Resources, listed on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, black owned. So it's quite an exciting time for them to increase the, the, the um, potential for their coal offtake. They produce about 39 million tons of coal a year. Most of it going into the energy sector, some of it going as coking coal into the steel sector. They've got those two markets. And they have a situation where they're also having to look to the future. They, their comment was also that, you know, the actual opportunity for the IPPs, as they call them, the independent power producers, is not huge. You know, 2,500 megawatts, 900 megawatts already taken up by this. So you'll note that they're also going into renewable energy space. They're looking to the future very carefully because of potential changes of demand, perhaps not the biggest offtake for coal uh, in the future. But in the meantime, you know, they've got at least 20 years of having a great time with coal because they've got those two massive contracts. Uh, Madupi uh, is the one, Matimba is the other. Matimba is the existing contract. They supply coal to Eskim for those big power stations. They will also supply Matimba and are supplying it already as it ramps up. You know, that will keep it going, you know, for 40 years as a major offload, shield it from the ups and downs of the open coal market and at the same time allow it to look at what's happening in the energy space and enabling it to react. But in the meantime, they're very happy to be able to get uh, this uh, preferred bidder status from South Africa's Department of Energy, which announced the coal baseload uh, projects for independent power producers. And the company has also highlighted that the current regulatory environment is helping it um, play a greater role in the private sector-led uh, coal-fired power sector. How so? Well, you know, this regulatory environment allows the private sector in as an actual generator of electricity using coal. Now, this is, uh, you know, grist to the mill of Exoro, and it has had this application for Tabametsi in for a long time. And Possibly there could be more. So who knows you know, wh what may come up next, the partnerships that we see. So this regulatory environment has given an opportunity to the coal producers to be partners in adding value to coal in the form of electricity and you know, having a good revenue stream from that. And then Marafe has announced rising attributable ferrochrome production. What has led to this? And you know, again, Marafi, black owned, black controlled. So you've got Exoro, you know, black owned, black controlled. Two companies, you know, this great transformation has taken place. And we found with Marafi, you know, it, it stands on the shoulders of a giant. It stands on the shoulders of Glencore. So Glencore, you know, does the hard yards. And, you know, Marafi benefits <laughs> from these hard yards. They also have managed 
they've managed the way they've built up the ferrochrome production in a masterful way and it is coming through by carefully you know making sure that your stockpiles are right and doing a, a good balance as you move your, your product into the market also benefiting of course from other ferrochrome producers which have shut up shop which again allows the price to lift and we see that you know the new european price is is, is a price that's about 12 percent up you know on, on the previous quarter so they starting marafi with in their partnership with this glencore marafi joint venture in ferrochrome to now feed product in to a market where the prices are rising <laughs> that's always a very good thing and because you know glencore is such a big marketer it is quite masterful at doing this so marafi you know, w w which is, uh, has a big shareholding with the Baffa King, about 300,000 people strong, has a wonderful partner there to actually make sure that it can get a great revenue stream. And we saw, you know, the cash that it generated, and it is in harvesting mode, the cash that it generated recently uh, shot the lights out. So, you know, with good management, you know, you can make money in these difficult circumstances, particularly if you're standing on the shoulders of a giant like Glencore. But the companies that are producing more, it's doing so efficiently. What do these efficiencies involve? Amazing. You know, I've been out to, to that plant. I've seen line one, line two. It not only uses much less energy, but it also can take you away from the f expensive feedstocks. And you can see them putting in lower priced feedstocks, you know, that they can get locally, anthracite, and uh, instead of a uh, expensive coking coal and you, they're getting uh, feedstocks from you, you know platinum mines nearby they're getting that what we call the UG2 uh, chrome so it's upper group 2 and able to really manage the situation by lowering the cost of, of, of the feedstocks coming in and then having a very efficient new plant the, the you know the line 1 line 2 churn out this product to m ensure that you can have a margin even you know, when prices are very low. Thanks, Martin. It's a great pleasure, Tracy. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the South African mining industry.